Greetings, greetings everyone. Yes, sir. All right. You guys know what it's time what it's time for. Um it is uh what time is 7:34, so this is going to be quite a lengthy video cuz I got about 60 60 questions here and I'm going to answer all of them. So there's no limit to these videos or to these um type of videos here <clears throat> I'm answer all the questions so if you're new to this video <clears throat> if you into the, if you're new if you're new to this channel if you're this is your first time watching the Q&A video this is what the rule is the rules are you have to when this for example this video here if you have any questions post them in this video and I will answer them in the next Q and A video. The questions being and the questions being responded to, answered in this video are from last week's Q and A video. Okay, <clears throat> that way, I know I have a lot of videos. That way, it's easier for me to answer questions rather than, you know, people send me they putting questions all over the place in different videos. It's easier for me to just answer them all in one video because I keep getting. I get a lot of questions and, and, and messages like every day so it's easy it's just easy for me to do so just keep that in mind <clears throat> let me take a sip of this water here real quick good old Cynthia Mm, 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 mm. This is good stuff. All right, <clears throat> let's do this here. All right, we're gonna start from the top. First question by Palabra, Palabra, my friend Palabra. Welcome back, man. Welcome back. This guy asked the most questions out of everybody. He's he's very consistent when it comes to these videos. Alright, <clears throat> first question is, could you make a series of videos in which you talk to Steve Kaufman in every language that you that you two have in common? That's a total of at least 10. Steve did this with Luca. I would love to see that. Okay, I'll give you a thumbs up on that question. Good question. <clears throat> I actually reached out to Mr. Kaufman like a couple years ago. I can't remember exactly when it was, but um, I sent him a message and I, I, I told him that perhaps we can make a video you know make a video it'd be fun for the viewers to um you know practice some of the language that we have in common i think that was about two or three years ago um <clears throat> yeah it's a possibility it may happen um we'll see we'll see we'll be surprised but uh i wouldn't mind doing 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 something like that it will be good for the viewers they they will enjoy that all right Palabra, thanks for that question. I see you have another one here. Uh, let me get to this second one here. <clears throat> Dra kind. I'm gonna just call you Dra. This question here. What do you think about tests like TOEIC, JLPT, DELE, etc.? Have you taken this kind of test yourself? Okay. Um. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Uh, I think those tests are well. Every it's different. Everybody have their um, different reasons, all reasons for taking those those type of tests. Uh, many people who are overseas and they're trying to study English in a uh, English speaking country, they have to take like a TOEFL test and all that. Those tests are required. And I also believe if you're going to teach, is that do you need? Maybe you don't. Do they have? I don't know if they have it like ESL tests that you have to take if you want to teach English overseas those type of tests are required to take but <clears throat> I think uh, at the same time like JLPT I talked a bit about this and I've taken the JLPT before um, those can be like uh, things to you can look at for motivation um, to mark your achievements you know um, like for me I took the JLPT uh, back then I know they had, it's kind of different now they named them N1 N2 but when I took it it was like JLPT, JLPT level 3 I took that um, I was gonna take the very very first one but I skipped it 
I took the JLPT level three and I take JLPT level two. <clears throat> I didn't do that well on JLPT level two, but I did. I did. Yeah, I I, did, I can't remember my score on three, but I, I took both tests. I didn't really study for them. I just went in and just took them. Um, wasn't trying to be cocky or anything. I just let time go by and, and I didn't really prepare for them. So I went and took it. I you know I felt uh, a sense of achievement when I when I got my certificate. Actually, right here, look. As we speaking, <clears throat> this is my JLPT JLPT for level three. I took back in what two thousand eight, long time ago. And you know it was a it was a uh, I felt proud of that because I studied Japanese on my own. Um, I didn't I didn't like take it in school or anything. So you know I felt that uh, I had an achievement by you know getting it. I earned it. You know. Um, yeah, so I think it's good uh, to use for to look at for your motivation, um, and also, like I said, uh, for it's required for uh, some people to take if they want to work overseas or you know become a, a type of teacher. All right, thanks for your question, Dry. If you have any other questions, post them in this video here, and I will I will answer them in the next video. All right, here our friend Palabra again. <clears throat> Hello, Moses. I would like to know more about Arabic. Teach yourself colloquial, e.g., what Arabic do they teach you? I'm confused. I heard native Arabic speakers don't speak standard Arabic. They speak their dialects. I think the language courses teach you standard Arabic, right? I heard it's something like Shakespeare English. Which Arabic do I have to learn, and are there resources for dialects available? Would you recommend learning a dialect from scratch? As always, thank you so much for your answer to my questions. Peace. Readings from Switzerland. <clears throat> so that's our friend Palabra again. So yeah, this is very important. Um, for people who are interested in learning Arabic in the future, you need to really know this. Uh, first of all, those courses that you mentioned, Teach Yourself, Colloquial, <coughs> they have, um, it, they're not, they're, all of them aren't MSA, aren't the, uh, the the standard Arabic there are they have like different they have Egyptian they have Lebanese Arabic um, the one that you asked asked about being like Shakespeare English that's the MSA the modern standard Arabic <coughs> obviously yes they do have uh, books and those but yeah the, you you you'll be able to find you'll be able to find some um, You'll be able to find some of those those resources, those courses in the Egyptian dialect, Lebanese dialect. Now, you said you were confused. I think you, if you're, if you're, okay, everybody's situation is different. It always, it, it always depends on a person's uh, situation. Now, <clears throat> if you're looking to major in Arabic, you want to study in school, and you plan on going over to an Arab, Arabic-speaking country to continue your studies, then I would say MSA will be the way to go because that's what they're going to teach you I mean although they do have the they I, I know I know at OSU they have Syrian they may they may have added some other dialects for Arabic but when I was going there they had Syrian they had Syrian and I think they had Egyptian <clears throat> but um MSA will 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 uh will be right in that situation if you don't plan on trying to speak with people on the streets <clears throat> you know if you're not like me, like to level up and stuff, then MSA will be, it will be the right way to go for you. Um, yeah, and I, I think for for people who are interested in learning Arabic in the future, I really do think that you need to look at your situation, uh, see what, ask yourself, okay, what am I trying to do with this Arabic? If you're trying to learn Arabic for friends, you want to speak with family or whatever, <clears throat> then you're going to have to learn a dialect. And then when you learn that dialect, when you choose it, you're gonna have to see where these friends are from, which dialect they speak. You want to figure, you want to find that out first before you even start learning the language. That's very important. Um, I think it makes more sense to learn a, a dialect because uh, that's what makes that's that's one of the things that makes uh, Arabic difficult. It's the dialects, you know, and uh, you know if you only know MSA and you go up and try to talk with someone in the store. They're not going to. They're not going to respond to you in MSA. They're going to. They're going to respond to you in English, or they try to. They may try to respond to you in their dialect. <clears throat> and this is this is just from my own experience. All right. I think I answered your question thoroughly. <clears throat> blah, blah, blah. 
you know what to do if you have any other questions post them here and I will I will answer them in uh, next week's video alright <clears throat> next question doggy do you know Patua are you going to try and learn it no I don't know Patua but you know what it's funny that it's funny because we do have some Jamaican places around here in Columbus. I think it would be cool to uh, learn some patois and go in there and mess around with those people. And I've seen actually in Cleveland too. I've seen a lot of uh, Jamaican stores. <clears throat> I wouldn't mind trying it out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Why not? Um. Thanks for your question. Next question by Adalstein. Adalstein, I'm gonna call you Adalstein. He asks, "Have you studied Icelandic at any point?" Yes, I studied a little bit of Icelandic a long, long time ago, and I still remember some words. I know, I remember. I think it's "come do scythe." It's like something like. Come do scythe, oh bless Adur, or something like that. A long time ago, though, long, long, long time ago. I wouldn't mind. Uh, ooh, that's ooh. I was one. I was like, man, this stuff is spicy. <coughs> I forgot. I got this at the. <coughs> wow, I got that at the Whole Foods store. Spicy ass day. I was about to say, like, what the heck am I eating? I thought it was regular chocolate. That was spicy. Okay. All right. Next question. <coughs> Kyle, Kylie, Kyle, or I'll say Kyle. Hey Moses, do you have any tips for someone trying to make a career out of languages? language learning and perhaps language teaching also do you think it's it is possible to make a living teaching tutoring language that that are not your native language for example i'm a native english speaker but i'm working towards advanced levels in in french and german i'm also very interested in russian and persian thanks for the great videos keep it up sir all right then welcome to the channel uh, i haven't seen you here before <clears throat> um there's a lot of uh, different things you can do with language learning languages um, you can become a linguist. You can become a translator. Um, you can become a teacher. Um, you, I mean, it's a lot of things you do. As far as being like um, making a living tutoring and stuff like that, it's possible. I mean, it's it's, it's very possible. That's that's basically what I did when I st when I first started. Um, if you if you're in a if you're I will start like <clears throat> let me see because you asked me. Uh, if it's not your native language, I will start doing it at a school. I will take some classes, you know, finish them classes or finish whatever. <clears throat> take like two level. Uh, for example, you could take, for example, if you take like, like me, I took, uh, I took all the Zulu classes and, uh, did I finish all the Swahili? I can't remember. I think I finished all the Swahili classes. I think I did. If you do that, it'll be on your record, and um, it, when you go apply for a job to tutor, they will look at your they will look at your record, and they will see that you did a, that you did take those classes, and it will be easy for you to get a job because they may they may need you to tutor some people who are like in 102 or 101, and they they need help, and if they see that that's on your schedule, they see that you <coughs> they see that you took that before. They will. They, it will be easy for you to get that job. That's what happened with me. I took when I was going to OSU. I took Russian 101, and um, they set me up with this. They were like athletes. This guy, he needed help with Russian 101. I was able to help him with Russian 101, Russian 101 because I took the class. I knew I knew how to do the work for them from the class. So that you could start there. I would start there, and then. Um, build up your experience you know your confidence uh, tutoring people and then perhaps what you can do you could put some flyers up <clears throat> and then get some contacts from some students on the campus that's what I did <coughs> you know so the, fir the first thing I was to start I would just get my confidence up do that 
and then start you know you can start your own thing putting up flyers that's what I would do so it depends on what you um, what you're trying to do but yeah I think I answered your question thoroughly um, yeah thanks for the question Kyle if you have any other questions post them below and I will answer them in, answer them in next week's video um, next question <clears throat> Cartmando98 what do you think about the app in niche in hen, hen, hen native you know what I've never heard of that but I will check it out it's a lot of apps going around lately a lot of a lot of recommendations on different apps <coughs> yeah I've never heard of that before so I can't really speak on that uh, next question people can fly 23 are you interested in learning Khoisan click language maybe just for fun absolutely yeah, why not why not I would I wouldn't mind learning a language like that I'm, I'm interested in any language it doesn't really matter um, I just I'm very open-minded I like to try new things so yeah yeah I, I'll definitely be open to learn to learn something uh, in, uh, that language uh, next question by Foxy the Pirate Fox hello lost you 55,000 I'm a new subscriber to your channel I've noticed that you sometimes learn languages based on the demographic of, area, of your area which is very interesting how would I go about this method great question <clears throat> great question um, <clears throat> that's just one of the reasons why I choose my languages uh, demographic <clears throat> and also I've gotten some people on uh, some of my followers they were recommend me they say you should try to like finish see finish we don't have very we don't have very many speakers of that language that was actually recommended to me by several of my uh several of my uh, followers they said they they kept telling me that it was difficult and i should give it a shot so i decided to give it a shot but as far as the demographic thing basically what you need to do <clears throat> all you have to do is <clears throat> get on your computer <clears throat> for example if you're learning swedish whatever city you in to go to the computer type in your city put a dash and put Swedish restaurants Swedish grocery you could do several things first try Swedish restaurants <coughs> I'm sorry Paul, I was coughing here <clears throat> that spicy chocolate man that that thing caught me off guard <clears throat> so go to uh, go to your you know go to Google go do a search put your city put a dash <clears throat> and put Swedish restaurants search that and see what all comes up under Swedish restaurants <clears throat> you can do that or you can do Swedish grocery or something like that that's what I do and if I don't have any luck finding those places on, uh, in my city I will go to the neighboring city and do the same thing like for example for me Cleveland I will go I will put Cleveland and put like Swedish restaurant Swedish grocery or something like that and if something pops up then I'll take that I'll add the address I'll call them up <clears throat> I'll add the phone number and address and I'll call them up just to make sure it's a spot you know I'll ask them some questions I'll get I'll see if I hear an accent and I'll get around to asking where they're from and then <clears throat> I'll check that on my list say okay great I'm going there because <laughs> I'm not going to drive <clears throat> I'm not going to drive like two three hours up to Cleveland uh, without confirming that they speak that language I'm not going to do that so that's normally what I do you could do the same it's really simple it's really really simple you can also if you have any universities in your city uh, check them out see what language see if they offer the language there because you may be able to go up there and you may be able to practice with a, with a teacher or someone and also students from that country and that's something else I need to do more of as well thanks for your question Foxy if you have any other questions post them below and uh, we will answer those in next week's video what's next <clears throat> oh we have a lot of questions here today what good Spanish book would you recommend <clears throat> people okay you have to be more specific when you say Spanish book are you referring to a language for learning Spanish or a reading Spanish book I'm not sure exactly what you're what you're uh, talking about I need you to be more specific please please sir 
Timothy, <clears throat> when will you go back to another Asian festival? Those were always my favorite videos. Just you and Marcel going around blowing minds. Also, do you want to get this work on that Mortal Kombat on PS4? <laughs> Just let me know. Get this work. All right, what's going on, Timothy? What's going on, man? Um, actually, they have a um, the festival coming up this month. Yep, and I think I'm going to go to it. Okay, I like going to those festivals every year. <coughs> always good, good, always get good footage. It's always a great experience. Yes, yes indeed. Um, Mortal Kombat. I haven't played, <coughs> man. I haven't played a whole lot of Mortal Kombat lately. The last game I played was Street Fighter, and I haven't played that for a couple months. So, yeah, I don't want to get beat down, and uh, yeah, I got to get back into the game. But yeah, when I get back into it. <coughs> I'll let you know, man. I'll let you know. I know you joined my stream, so I'll let you guys know on my stream if I'm, you know, when I get back into that, uh, playing the games and stuff. All right, you have a second question here. What is the best way to learn kanji for someone who doesn't know Chinese already? <clears throat> I've been looking for a good way to learn it. Yeah, that's tricky. Um, you know, everyone learns differently. Uh, but for me, I would say what was really good for me learning that is like, writing out dialogues learning learning them in context rather than rather than learning them isolated <coughs> but like i said that's just for me some people like to learn them isolated i try to learn chinese characters isolated and it it was a pain and it took too long so um i decided to use a different approach you can get a book get something like this write out the dialogues you know just do that uh them characters have come up again in another dialogue but it's all in context and that's how that's that's what I would recommend I would recommend trying that <clears throat> alright Timothy if you have any questions man post them below in this video and I will answer them in next week's Q&A <clears throat> okay Pak Che Young you say that your wife is from Taiwan but sometimes you say she is from Korea a different person <laughs> No, my wife is from Taiwan. I, I sometimes I joke in my video. I joke around a lot, so you can't really take uh, everything that I say in the video. You can't really take serious. I just do it for fun, just to I don't know. I like to joke around like that. Um, easiest language you've learned? <clears throat> Gaming potato. Easiest language you learn? I would say um, it's between Indonesian and Esperanto because Esperanto I did try to learn that I wouldn't say I learned it because I you know I pretty much forgot <coughs> everything I learned but when I was learning it which is for a couple weeks or something like that it was fairly easy Indonesian is pretty it's I would say Esperanto is easier than Indonesian but those two languages have, have been the uh, e the easiest for me to learn <coughs> I would say League of Navi. Did you even think about what? Did you even think about leave YouTube? <laughs> no, I've never thought about leaving YouTube because everything you see me doing on YouTube is genuine passion. I love sharing my experience. I love I just love what I do. Um there's been times when I had to uh step away from YouTube. <clears throat> I had to step away from YouTube, but um I never thought about leaving it permanently. Like, oh, I'm done with YouTube. I want to no, know. I never even thought about doing that. And uh, and I don't see I don't see it happening anytime soon. All right, next question. <clears throat> Let me see. How many? Ooh, scroll down here. <coughs> ooh, we have a lot of questions tonight. <coughs> Okay. All right. <clears throat> hey, little sup. La uh, la next question. I saw it. In terms of practical uses of career possibilities, <clears throat> what languages would you recommend? I have always been fascinated by the languages, but I have never had <clears throat> the dedication to really self teach beyond early Rosetta Stone volumes. Seeing your videos motivates me. To, de to, ve to develop myself some skills and I'm wondering what you would recommend and thoughts on learning another language as a potential career option <clears throat> okay good question uh, first of all 
you should look at your native language and see um, if I'm gonna just assume your native language is English if your native language is English <clears throat> you may want to look in languages other languages such as Spanish Italian Portuguese um, as far as Asian language you can do something like Indonesian those type of languages start there <clears throat> build your confidence up okay I'm not saying you can either do Chinese but I say this because it from your question it seems like you don't have uh, any experience learning languages so if you're uh, <clears throat> if you're a beginner learning languages you've never learned a language before um, I would suggest going with something that's similar to your native language first <clears throat> for the sake of building your confidence to learn other languages um, I didn't do that but my situation was different but I would that's what I would recommend doing and just go from there <clears throat> choose your language see how far you get and I think from there you'll be able to determine what you can do with that language in the future uh, as I mentioned before being a teacher uh, being a translator interpreter you know any of those <clears throat> a linguist or whatever they have a lot of things you can do for languages so I would do that I would start with a language <clears throat> and see how far you get and then you'll be able to you'll be able to uh, determine uh, what you will be able to do with that language alrighty <clears throat> thanks for your question <clears throat> if you have any other questions post them below and I will answer them in next week's Q&A video alright <clears throat> We're going to be on the road tonight. Next question. Go, God, I'm going to call you God the Rear. I've been learning Spanish for about half a year now, and I can still barely understand natives when they speak. <clears throat> but I can read, write, and form sentences pretty well. How do I get better at understanding people? Good question. Good question. <clears throat> All right, so uh, the only way to start, the only way to understand someone is interacting with the people, um, and you have to do that a lot. Okay, a whole lot, in a whole lot of interaction. You got to be, you got to put yourself in a situation where you're <clears throat> you're exchanging words, exchanging, having a conversation, doing that, and hanging out with the people being around them I mean you can watch videos watch movies and stuff that stuff is good too that's part of input but the real thing is actually being around them you know you either working around them you're you have friends you just talking with them very often that's the that's how you're gonna build up your comprehension <clears throat> in that language and if you know you say you've been learning Spanish for a year if you haven't been doing that in the year two years go by I'll say like three years go by and you haven't been doing that you're going to be in the same boat. You're not going to be able to really understand a whole lot because you haven't been interacting enough with those people. So that's the cure. That's how you. That's how you. Uh, that's how you overcome that interaction. <clears throat> I know it's easier said than done, but you have to do that. That's 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 just what you have to do. <clears throat> that's why most people go overseas because they 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 know that they if they go over there they're putting themselves in a situation where they have to interact with these people. They have to get a job. <clears throat> they have friends. You know, they have to go out and buy groceries or whatever. They're going to be put in a situation where they need to use that language. So interaction, my friend, interaction. All right. Thanks a lot for your question. That was a really good question. Next question. <clears throat> Mark Levinson. See y'all. Hold your watch. How do you remember back in front vowel for Hungarian? I cannot seem to remember. Kissenem Sipen. Sipen. What's going on, Mark? See y'all, see y'all. Yo, Vajok. Yo, Vajok. <clears throat> back in front vowels for Hungarian. See, <clears throat> my approach, like when it comes to learning tones, pronunciation, all that stuff. <clears throat> what I do when I meet with the, when I meet with my native speaker, I just read. We like <clears throat> the type of exercise we do. You have to read after them. You have to read and repeat, read and repeat, read and repeat, read and repeat, and that's what I do. And um, <clears throat> when you do that, <clears throat> you do that enough. You will. Oh, I'm, I'm really sorry, guys, for this. I, I don't know why. I just this this coughing and all this stuff 
y'all gonna have to excuse me for that. I hope that's not bothering anyone. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I just repeat after the native and I read after them very often. And doing that will help you to start getting used to pronunciation accent. That's just what I do. Now, if, it, if I was by myself, <coughs> I would do, I would listen. I would read out loud some dialogue. Like you probably saw some videos I made in the past where uh, reading practice videos. I'll read out loud and get the feedback from the native speaker. I'll listen and I'll read out loud. I was making those videos a whole lot back in the day. But in those days, I, I, I didn't really have it set up to meet with native speakers but now it's it's different I don't have to really make those type of videos very often <clears throat> but that's what I do and uh, you can do the same and it, it works it works alright man thanks a lot for your question next question <clears throat> Skype on 8 yo Lao Shu I want to start learning some French because I have family there and I really want to be able to communicate where should I start hmm Where should I start? Well, um, <clears throat> I want to start learning some French because I have family there. I would start with just start with um, if you're new at learning a language, to boost your confidence. I would start with something. Start with like an app. Get get like Duolingo. Start with that. Get your confidence boosted up, <clears throat> and then you can get move on to something like uh, Pimsleur or uh michelle thomas or something like that move your way up and just i will start with something small first just to see how you like it because you may not even like it you may you may like you may start and say you know what i, I don't want to do this anymore so i will start with something get like a pimsleur or something or use duolingo for a little bit and see how you feel with that and then from there once you once you go once you have went through those then you'll uh be ready to decide what you could use next I'll be here. I'll always be here. If you do that, if you make it through that, <clears throat> just send me a question. Send me a send me a message, and let me know, and I'll give you some more advice. But that's what I recommend you doing. Start off with that first. Alrighty. Thanks a lot for your question. Next question, <coughs> Jake. <coughs> My dad's always wanted to learn Spanish, so I'm buying him a course for his birthday. Ideally, I want something he'll be able to use use in his daily commute to work something audio heavy he's not big on book learning any suggestions have you tried language pod 101 <clears throat> thanks for your question Jake um yes I did try language pod a long time ago but I think for your situation and it's funny that you asked me this because this is just similar to the question I asked I will get your dad, I will get him a Pimsleur. Get him that Pimsleur. It's a 30 minutes, it's a 30 minute course. Have him work through that. If it's if he likes audio based courses, he should try Pimsleur. He should try uh there's a Michelle Thomas. <laughs> and um those are the only two courses that come to my mind as far as audio based. But yeah, Michelle Thomas and Pimsleur. I will I will get him that. Look into that. Um yeah. I think that's how you asked me. Yeah. So yeah, Pimsler or Michelle Thomas. Look into those two courses. Alrighty, thanks for your question. <clears throat> Next question. Stavros. This look like a Greek. Is this person from Greece? Okay, do you do you use any audio lessons? Like Michelle Thomas, Pimsler, con conversa con speak in your car, etc. Wow, amazing. Jake, look look at this. <clears throat> Speak in your car. I've I've never even heard of that. I find them really good at teach you at, at teaching you the base the basics and basic pronunciation. Can you recommend any? Also, do you recommend Duolingo? Thinking of doing the Swedish one to brush up. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> yeah, I've used I've used Michelle Thomas Pimsler. I've never heard of Conversaphone, Conversaphone, or Speak in Your Car. I've never used those before. Um. Definitely, like I told the previous guy, um, <clears throat> I will say Pimsleur and Michelle Thomas. Uh, I've used those before. <clears throat> and Duolingo, definitely, yeah, try Duolingo out. Duolingo is good. And, uh, yeah, that's interesting. Speak in your car. How new was that course, by the way? I've never heard of that. Speak in your car. Yeah, get that Duolingo, though, definitely. 
in the African language and opinions on most beneficial Swahili <clears throat> or Arabic any African languages and opinions on most beneficial um, now when it comes to the African language I don't know where all oh, this for, I don't know your yeah, THKMRA as far as the African languages I would have to say that you really have to see you really have to uh, go by your demographic and um, <clears throat> Go by that and see where most of the Africans come from, and it's, you you can choose your you can make your decision based off of that. Now, for me, I live in Columbus, Ohio. We have a lot of Africans here. We have a lot of Somalis, a lot of Ghanaians, a lot of Ethiopians. We have like a, just a variety of them here. So I have a lot of different options. So <clears throat> you should look into that in your area, see where most of these Africans are from, and determine. That way you determine you, what which which one of those languages you want to learn. <clears throat> Swahili or Arabic? <clears throat> um, I think Arabic. I think Arabic is more. And again, Arabic, see dialects, MSA. I think it will be more useful than Swahili, uh, especially if you live in the states, depending on where you live at, because there are a lot of Ar Arabic speakers around. Now, Swahili is very useful here in Columbus <clears throat> because a lot of the Somali people can speak that. Um, I believe uh, they there was a war going on in Somali and they migrated over to Kenya. Uh, hence, a lot of them can speak that Swahili language. I met a lot of them that can speak Swahili. Again, I don't know what area you live in, so it's I can't really. It's hard for me to say. Go with Swahili. Go with Arabic. Um, well, I could say Arab because there's a lot of them. I'm pretty sure you have a lot of Arabs in where you live, but I don't know about Swahili. So it really depends on your demographic. All right. <clears throat> I hope I helped you out there. <clears throat> Next question. Pumples pineapple. Even though you speak the northern Vietnamese, do you find most Vietnamese eat? Do you find most Vietnamese, even if they are from south or central, can still understand you and talk with you? Yes, <clears throat> they can understand. See, this is what I experienced when I run into Vietnamese people here in the U.S. When I try to speak to them, um, I've even even when I was in Taiwan, I had this, I had this, uh, this the same experience. A lot of them are Southern Vietnamese. They understand what I'm saying, <clears throat> but they when they respond back, it's going to be Southern Vietnamese. That's just what I experienced. But they can still understand me. They can still understand. No problem. All right. Uh, next question. Thanks for your question. Uh, Black Dragon. <clears throat> Have you thought about doing a TED Talk? I would love to see you talk about your passion for language. Okay. Um, someone just uh, recently. Recently just. They, someone recently contacted me about TED Talk. And see, to see, and you know, they wanted to know if I was interested in doing something like that. Actually, um, a long time ago, I think about three years ago, um, them TED Talks people contacted me. I think uh, Mr. Lewis, uh, Benny, Benny had recommended me to do a TED Talks, and they had contacted me, and they were saying they would pay for the hotel and all that stuff. But see, at the time, <laughs> I was kind of reluctant on doing it i don't I, I felt i don't know i didn't really feel good about doing it you know um i don't know not 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 due to lack of confidence i just didn't i wasn't really excited about it. I, I was flattered by the offer i was flattered by being by them contacting me and, and and telling me that they will uh pay for my my they will pay for my ticket and my and and, and my room and stuff you know but i just wasn't really excited about doing it <clears throat> but um I don't know it's a possibility I might do something like that in the future. We'll see. We'll see. Um <clears throat> cuz yeah I I could definitely talk when it comes to language that's something I can do. I can definitely talk about my passion or that. That that's something that I can really talk about although I consider myself an introvert and very shy. I could talk about languages. I could definitely do that. I could see myself doing that. All right, next question by Nelson Trinidad. <clears throat> In how many languages do you have at least a low intermediate level? Which ones? Mm. 
low intermediate level I don't know let me see I, I don't know the exact number I would say let me see <clears throat> low intermediate okay I look at my current list of languages here and that list I would say definitely say Finnish Finnish on my list I'm about low intermediate in that language Finnish I will say Korean uh, yeah Finnish Korean Finnish Korean what else um yeah Finnish Korean man that's that's hard that's hard I don't know I really don't know I don't want to name I don't want to say a language and, and and try to you know I don't want to be wrong but off the top of my head definitely Finnish Korean uh I don't know I have to you know what I wish I would have read this question before I think I saw this question <clears throat> but I didn't really I just I just I didn't I didn't really think about it but uh, I should have I should have uh, been prepared for this yeah I like to be right when I when I once people ask me these type of questions so let me get back to you on that man let me get back to you on that but the, the two languages that come up come to my mind are Finnish and uh, Finnish and Korean I would say like low intermediate level in those languages um, <clears throat> let me see okay you have another question I'm having trouble with my schedule I realize you have some language you study two to three times a week and I just might give it a try my question is how long should those studying sessions be considering I'll only study them two or three times a week great question great question um, <clears throat> so for me as you know I have language partners okay and basically if I look at my schedule which language I'm doing two times a week Bulgarian so Bulgarian I'm doing twice a week wait wait hold on is that right okay Macedonian wait hold on hold on hold on alright alright <clears throat> this is this is what this is what I do this is how I determine to do less than four days a week now first of all I would do language four times a week when I just start if I'm a beginner in that language I'm just starting I will spend four days a week once I move like I use FLR level one when I'm using that and I'm a level one I'm doing at least four days a week I have to once I get to level two then I'll drop the days down to like two or three times a week now when I meet with my partners it's about 30 minutes to an hour when I'm not meeting with my partners basically on those days I just go to a chat room practice those languages I'll do some writing exercises you know do some listening um, that's what I would do um, what else so yeah your main question is how long you should be studying those languages really it's two or three times a week um, I don't know how you're studying so it may be different for you but for me like I said I have partners and by meeting with those partners it, it's a it's a huge help two two three times a week just three hours meeting with the native speaker and then on the off days and I just go to a chat room that really helps me but if you're doing it by yourself um, it's, I don't know it's really hard to say it's really really hard to say I'm not sure how you're studying your language so it, I guess it all depends if you're meeting with partners or you know doing it by yourself let me know let me know in this video and um, I'll, I'll be able to answer you more clear in the next video alright sir thanks a lot for your question Jan Kosuta hi Moz I'm interested in Punjabi is, is this one of your languages if so how did you find it to learn which resources did you use okay uh, Punjabi it's not one of my languages I did I did dabble around with that language uh, a while ago um, it was I found it to be a pretty interesting language it, it it's like learning Hindi to me um, yeah it wasn't really difficult uh, for me uh, since I have these other languages in my under my belt Punjabi the grammar is, is structured in a similar way as Hindi it's a SOV language subject object verb uh, I have a couple languages under my belt uh, that follow that same grammatical pattern so 
Punjabi wasn't really a difficult language for me to learn uh, when I was messing around with it. Okay. Oh, and I am resource. I had I had a uh, what was I using? I think it was FLR FLR Punjabi. I was using for that when I was dabbling with it. Thanks a lot for your question, Jan. Let me know if you have any other questions in this video, and I will answer them in next week's video. All right. <clears throat> next question by Xiao Chen. This guy wrote in Chinese. He said, "Wo xiang wan wan ni jue de wai yu, wai yu, wai yu yi." Yi ying gung nan hai shu ying yi wai yu nan. Okay, so it looks like he asked me, he said, I would like to ask, do you think that it's difficult to translate? Let me see. Yeah, he asked me, is it, it, it do I think it, it, do I think it's difficult to translate from a foreign language to English or is it, or is it difficult to translate English into a foreign language? You know what? I think it depends on the language. It really depends. Like, like for example, uh, Japanese is really difficult to translate. A language like that is really difficult to translate from that language into English. It's really it's strange. It's really strange because the you know it's a backwards language, and when you translate, you got to like literally start at the end of the sentence and work your way back. So it really depends on the language that you're learning. Not all languages are like that, so it really depends, man. Thanks a lot for your question, Shishini. Next, qu next question by Alex Alexander Kuhn. Hey, man, I just got turned onto your channel. I've been teaching myself manner, but been pretty discouraged recently since most people I talk to have trouble understanding me because of my mistakes and tones. My reading, writing, and hearing is good, but how can I best practice to fix this? I need to level up. Welcome to my channel, Alexander. Uh, don't feel bad. You'll be all right. Um, let me see. Uh, yeah. So I mean, that's that's a natural thing. That's a natural thing. Uh, it, it's Chinese is going to be like that. You're not going to have perfect tones, but you definitely don't want to. You you definitely don't want to. You definitely don't want to stop trying to interact with them because that's how you're going to get better. Just keep doing what you're doing. Do your reading or writing, your hearing or listening or however your input methods, whatever you're doing. Excuse me. Keep doing that. But also continue to do to continue to try to interact with the native speakers because that's going to help out a lot. I mean, I had terrible tones when I first started doing Chinese. I didn't even really do that much input. I was just more of spoken. But I had a good pronunciation. I was able to pronounce the word the, the words accurately, you know. So you don't want to def you definitely don't want to stop. I know it's, it could be discouraging if they don't understand you, but you have to keep trying. That's my suggestion. Just keep trying, man. Don't get don't give up. Keep on leveling up. Just, just keep it up. Don't stop. Thanks a lot for your question. I wish you the best with your uh, Chinese. If you have any other questions, post them in this video and I will answer them in next week's video. Woo! What we have? 48 minutes. All right. Go Gaijing. Oh, long time no see. I used to study Navajo with this person. How are the girls doing? Girls are good. They're good. They're growing, growing rapidly. Um, my twins are five, and my youngest daughter, she's two. She'll be three in September. Yeah, they're good. They're doing good. They're doing very good. Thanks for asking. Hope all is well on your side. Hope all is well. What languages are you working on uh, these days? All right. Nice to hear from you. Swore my line and next question. Swore my line and <laughs> finish. Hello, Moses. Do you have any opportunities to practice finish the level up style out there at the streets? <laughs> is the only way with a finish friend online? As I bet there's not too many finish people just walking around. Okay, um, <clears throat> you know what? That's a good question, man. Uh, it, it is difficult it really is um i have to go to now here in columbus i've been to one place where i was able to level up and finish it was a it was like a cafe um i'm pretty sure you saw that video before but um yeah when i first started learning finish i went there and i leveled up with this woman um, i want to go back there since it's been a while and i got better for, since that last time that first time i spoke with her I want to I want to pay a visit there soon but um 
yeah it's it's not it's not easy to just run into finnish speaking people now i would what i would have to do is just catch someone like randomly like i may even meet i may meet i may meet a, a somali who speaks finnish you know something like that or someone from ghana that speaks and speaks finnish you know those type of situations though that's what i have to do for finnish unless they have like a bakery or some um restaurant in the area yeah but it's all good i have a partner and um i've been making some pretty good progress uh meeting with him and stuff but i i definitely need to speak more like my my spoken is pretty good but i need to speak more to to, to uh to advance more uh from the level i'm on right now let me see shift bro you look just like that parody youtuber i swear to god <laughs> you know what i it's funny that you said that i did look i went and i searched that name on uh youtube and i saw that yeah a lot of people kept saying that uh, my friends hit my i had a couple of my friends they post a video on my my page on uh, facebook and they said man this look just like you hey we may be related maybe he may be maybe a relative but uh yeah he does yeah I, I saw the guy yeah all right next question where we at we have 51 minutes where can i send you oh all right okay yeah i've already I already answered that <clears throat> moses how about i help you practice arabic and you help me learn spanish gibson thanks for the offer man um i will be up for that but my schedule right now i won't be able to do it. i'm not doing any arabic right now um if i had the time i would do that i would take your offer i will take it i will take you up on that but i probably won't be doing any arabic until yeah i have to see it's it, i have to see how i have to see how my schedule progresses throughout the year um but yeah thanks for your offer i really do appreciate that gotten 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 um he said i find your videos fun to watch and helps motivate me however i wish there was more tangible progress in each language in one way i feel like your videos show the weakness of diversifying and that it's better to focus on one or a couple of languages if you ever want to be able to use language efficiently what was your reasoning behind wanting to learn a bit of many languages instead of getting a couple of languages to a higher level okay great question great question i get this all the time um i see what you said uh see what you're saying um what i do is very unique and it's something that normally people wouldn't do they wouldn't do that they 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 feel that it's too many languages and um it's just best to focus on one or two languages um, i respect that i really do i do respect that um, at the same time we all have our own goals our own reasons for learning so i do understand someone who wants to learn a few languages to a higher level if they plan on going to a country to work um to live you know in that situation but for me i don't have any i don't have any plans on doing that like i'm living here in columbus ohio and i'm not traveling uh i don't have any plans on moving to a country to live so i don't really have a reason to sit down and learn language to see levels i really don't have a reason to do that so i just take advantage of my demographic and i love learning so i choose languages i just learn you know i learn to a certain level to a point to where i can at least interact on a basic level with the native speaker and that's it nothing really special um it's just something i like to, i love to do um originally i just wanted to know chinese I, that was the only language i want to learn but once i start interacting with people and getting that feedback it became addictive and here i am i'm learning all these different languages but i would say though i would say if i was moving to let's say i was moving to i don't know finland if i was moving to finland i would literally put more time into learn to finish and i will drop in the list that i like the, the list that i have now like my current list with all the languages i wouldn't be doing that because i know that i'm going to be moving to finland and i know that that language that language is going to be more useful than those other languages you know i will still practice the languages but i'll 
put more focus into that one language it, in that in that case it makes a lot of sense to me it makes a whole lot of sense all right um, I hope I answered your question thoroughly uh, thanks for your question if you have any other questions post them below and I'll answer them in the next video Zeke V next question Woo. I love the different indigenous North American languages. Navajo sounds. Oh, that's he didn't ask me a question. Thura, Burmese. Next question. Myanmar is one of the less and lesser known countries out there. Why and how did you pick up Burmese as one of the languages you want to learn? I was surprised when I saw Burmese under your belt. Yeah, cause Burmese. We have a lot of those. We have a lot of we have a lot of Burmese people here, and Burmese is an Asian language. You know that's where my journey started. It started in Asia, and I have to learn all the Asian languages. So Burmese being an Asian language, I have to learn. I have to learn it. I have to. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I don't have like a special special reason for learning. It's just that you know I love learning languages it's a, it's an Asian it's an, it's an Asian language and we have quite a few Burmese people here in the United States even in Akron small town Akron we have more Burmese people in Akron than here in Columbus and this is the capital this is this is bigger than Akron all right next question thanks for your question um, let me see thanks for your question Thura let me see click on this see where we at all right we getting closer all right I tuber I know you have taken JOPT before but have you taken a, an HS HSK test before Chinese manner I'm thinking of taking HS HSK 3 this year just to give myself a goal all right man how you doing been a long time I have never taken HS, HSK. However, I, I, I almost did a long time ago. I ordered the book, the cassettes, and everything, but I never really got around to taking that test. And you know what? I think I'm still going to take it. And when I do take that, when I do take that test, I will share my results with you guys. I will talk about my experience. I certainly will. And I wish you the best on that test when you take it. Okay. Next question. Luke Truman. Let me see. Did he? Is this a question? Hold on. Oh, okay. So, hi Moses. Thanks for thanks for the answer. If you are curious about my level, I have a few videos on my YouTube channel that I posted for the Add One Challenge recently. Sorry, if I was unclear before, what I meant was when Hong Kong people would text each other or speak online, they would write down the same characters. They will speak, but on all official documents, they use the written language. So what they write down will not be word for word. What is said, it is written in form similar to how Mandarin is spoken. A lot of the characters used are completely different. For example, now spoken for example, now spoken form is Iga and written form will be Xian Tsai, Gen Tsai, Yin Tsai. How do you pronounce that in uh, Cantonese? Thanks again. You know what? <laughs> I, you asked me something I can't remember exactly what your question was man I'm sorry for that I really am uh, I can't remember exactly what your question was about that you're gonna have to ask me again you're gonna have to ask me again I, I can't remember that question that you asked me before regarding these these characters um, mm, Dan I, I want to give you something I want to give you I'll try to give you something yeah, yeah, yeah. You might want to ask me again. Ask me again. It'll be better. Uh, okay. Next question here. BTS Army. Wait, is this a question? Oh, okay. I see. He said, you give me so much confidence and motivation for speaking with people. I've, I've, I've always been pretty scared to speak Spanish, Korean. But I recently spoke to three Spanish speakers and one Korean speaker this month because of your videos. I was so happy and felt so nervous, sending so much love. My question is, what has been the best tool way that you learned Korean? Um, best tool, best way? I don't know. I because when I first started learn when I first started learning uh, Korean, it, 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 
I had like a whole bunch of different resources. So I was like kind of all over the place when I first started learning that language. Then I just leveled up with people. That's all I was doing. So it's really hard to say what what, what has been the um, the best tool, a way of me learning that language. It's really difficult. Um, definitely speaking with people, it helps a lot. But as far as like resources, whoo. Yeah, I can't even answer that because I had a whole bunch of resources for Korean. I was all over the place with resources for that language. I had a whole bunch of phrase books. I had a whole bunch of uh, course books. Uh, someone gave me a, uh, an authentic Korean book that they use in Korea. It was like a high school book. I was using that. It was just, it was just. I just had a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of stuff for for learning Korean. But leveling up, yeah, can't go wrong with that. Oh, we're an hour in now. All right. Next question. Sick. Twenty-two. Let me see. All right, we're getting closer, guys. We're getting closer. Hey Moses, how long do you think it takes to be able to speak a foreign language spontaneously? I've been learning French for about three years now, and I've been meeting up with my partner consistently for about six months to practice at least four hours a week. But I still feel like I'm far away from being fluent. I make a lot of mistakes when I speak. Do you think there's something that I could do to accelerate my speaking skills, or maybe I'm just being too hard on myself and I need to be patient? Thanks. All right, thanks a lot for your question. Um, you know what? This is like I'm gonna tell you. This reminds me of Finnish. What I'm going through for Finnish, like I've been doing Finnish for over a year, and I meet with my partner. And I've made a lot of progress. Like my comprehension has gotten a lot better. Um, I can understand a lot uh, written when I see it written. Um, it's just my spoken needs some more work, and I make mistakes when I still speak. And I think the only way to you you should still continue to meet with your partner, but um, you should try to find opportunities to speak with some other people. Um, you can do this. You could do it on Hello Talk or a chat program, but if you could find some people in real life to speak with, that would definitely help out a whole lot. It's just something about that interaction with the people that will definitely help you with that. Um, and then, I mean, three years is a long time. I mean, I, I think by this time you can uh, start doing some grammar because that will help as well. You know, mess around with some grammar. You're obviously you're obviously not a uh, complete beginner. So I think it's safe for you to do some grammar. So you can do a combination of grammar and just speaking with people and just keep meeting with your partner. But yeah, at the same time, be patient. You definitely want to be patient. Don't rush yourself. You'll get it. All right. Next question. Thanks a lot for your question. Uh, Vaughn, thoughts about the Dutch language? Dutch, I haven't gotten around to that language yet, but I will, I will, I will be doing it. I will be doing it. You guys will know when I do it because I always update my followers when I start new languages. But, uh, yeah, it sounds interesting. It sounds, you know, I like the way it sounds. It's kind of hard. It sounds like German. But, um, yeah, we'll see when I get, when that day comes, when I get to it, we're going to have fun with it. Let me see. Have you next question? Have you ever considered learning Albanian? Oh, I replied to him. Okay, we getting real close. Next question, Oleg. Hi, Moza. In the current political climate, anti-immigration slogans, travel bans on foreigners, Trump threatening to build a wall. <laughs> Do you find that people's attitudes have changed when you are out leveling up? Are foreigners more defensive about being asked where they're from? Are they more nervous speaking foreign languages in public? great question great question you know what I haven't really noticed anything different it's, it feels the same to me um, I know it's a lot of po political drama going on and stuff and you know this turmoil but I, I don't think I don't think most people are uh, yeah I, I don't think most people are really yeah the, well, I mean, at least the people that I've approached they, they're, they're the same I don't get any sense of nervousness or any type of tension due to the current political uh, situation. Next question: Have you had any nerves with Hungarian people speaking Hungarian? I mean, oh yeah, I answered them. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I not yet, but I will soon. And you know, we I just found out today that we had in Ohio, we have the population for Hungarians, two hundred over two hundred thousand. And I know some of those are American born Hungarians, but that's a lot of Hungarians, man. We gonna be out there real soon. Real, real soon. I'm just I'm working on it right now. Working on it. Working on it. Roger. Hi, Moses. I'm Roger from Melarusa. Do you know where it is? What language has been the most difficult to learn so far? Thanks. Okay, Roger. How you doing? Melarusa. You, I think it's in Russia. Is that? Wait, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, it ain't. It's in, uh, oh, man. I think I searched this. When you asked me, I think I searched it. It's a Spanish-speaking place, I think. Yeah, I because I never heard of this place. I think it's a Spanish-speaking uh, country. I think difficult language, most difficult language. Uh, grammatically, I would say Finnish. Finnish has been very, very complicated, very, very difficult to learn grammatically. As that language is, that's a serious language. Yeah. Finnish and Hungarian, those languages, yeah. Cheers from Norway. Hope everything is good with you. And that's the last. Day. Yeah, that was the last question. So, wow, an hour and six minutes. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and upload this video. And um. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, just post them in this video and I will answer them in next week's video. So, um, as you guys just saw, I answer everybody's questions, so there's no limit. If I had a hundred questions in here, I would answer them. You know, the video will be longer, but, you know, this is what people want to hear because uh, I get a lot of these questions every day. So, that is it for this video. I'm going to conclude and I'm going to upload it. And uh, you guys take care and uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks for viewing. Peace out. See ya.